of Layakti and a very good evening. These are our top stories for tonight. Government is keen to initially borrow funds from the Asian Development Bank to provide much needed capital for newest Development Bank for lending to the private sector. This was revealed by the Special Envoy of Premier Dion Tofitu, who spoke at the recent 52nd annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank last month. Tofita told the delegates the Niwayan government's expectation is to work with the ADB Secretariat to provide technical and other expertise which he says will help them refine and provide some key solutions to ensure government achieves their goals in a timely manner. The question of any loans, Tofitu says, will be determined by these reports through government is keen initially to borrow funds to provide much needed capital for our development bank for lending to the private sector. He says government will start small and borrow more as required. If there's a need for government to borrow for some major projects, the Premier's special envoy says they will decide this with the expertise of ADB, as well as the presentation of a business plan, which will indicate the long-term business viability of this investment. He also told the delegates Newer's membership in ADB is different because we have done it ourselves. He says there were countries and friends who advised and supported, but this was the first time the Newer government has created an opportunity of this kind without New Zealand's direct assistance. Minister for Social Services, Honourable Billy Talangi, has confirmed medicine supply is affected by freight issues, not funding. This was in response to Common Role member Crosley Tatui who asked in the Assembly why is the Health Department continuously running out of dependent drugs for our people? Is it because Treasury has not paid the overseas drug companies? Honourable Billy Talangi stated the medicine when ordered, the freight doesn't come through and it gets offloaded. He says they are ensuring medicine supply on the island is consistent. The construction of the new Joint Emergency Operations Centre at Fonokola is ahead of schedule, according to the project manager Ernest Nemaia of Shop Exports, one of the partners contracted to building the centre. Ernest said that Shop Exports, in partnership with Motama Constructions, were initially planning to complete the project in August, but work has been progressing well and they're now expecting to complete in July, one month ahead of schedule. The Joint Emergency Operations Centre, which includes the police station, is funded by the Secretariat of the Pacific Community to the tune of $1 million. The Chief of Police confirmed that the building will be managed by the National Disaster Management Office as the Emergency Operations Centre, where coordination of first responders will be during emergency situations and during the aftermath of natural disasters. The current upgrading roadworks is up to Makefu. The Ministry of Civil and Quarry confirms upgrading of roadworks have already been completed in the southern side of the bottom hill Tamakotonga to the top of the Avasele Hill. For the northern side, Namui to Anaiki Hotel, the upgrading has been met with challenges including bad weather, the availability of aggregate chips for the resealing of potholes, machinery breakdown and staff availability. Civil Inquiry says the upgrading is expected to be completed once the China Railway Group contractors are on island. Meanwhile, only 46 kilometres of roading will be covered under the $20 million project. This was revealed in the recent Assembly meeting. Mother of two and former Senior Crown Counsel of the Niue Government, Crystal Toy Pinina Ann Heko, was laid to rest last Saturday. Nina, as she is known to many, passed away in Auckland on the 4th of May, where she and her young family had been living since she was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer in 2016. Pinina was an advocate for Pacific victims of breast cancer in New Zealand. Diagnosed last year with stage 4, terminal metastatic breast cancer deemed incurable, it was then that she had sought the Ibrance and Fluvestrant drugs to help prolong her life, costing her at least $7,000 monthly. Recognizing the disparities in healthcare and early detection among specific women, her current Give a Little Page donation is $19,985, where last year's fundraising concert here in Niue gave big also to support Nina with an excess of $10,000. The Give a Little donation page is still open and closes October 2020. Crystal Toipi Nina Hiko was the youngest daughter of Mahetoi and the late Makamo Hiko's 15 children. She was 36 years old. She is survived by her husband Ofa Ahosivi and their two children. Over the weekend was another highlight to the Ekalesi Niue annual calendar, the White Sunday, also known as Children's Sunday. 
This is the day when parents, family and friends fill the churches around the island to listen to their young ones recite verses from the Bible, perform short stories and sing hymns. While most of the villages continue to hold two services, there's a growing number of villagers who have opted to hold only one service on White Sunday. This year, Alofi, Tuapa and Liku have one service so the children can enjoy the rest of the day celebrating with their mothers, as Sunday was also Mother's Day. That ends our news for tonight. Look forward to seeing you next time. Nonofua, moimonuwena. Have a great evening.